Hey friends, welcome to our week five video with the Scripture Doodle Devotional. Um, I hope you had a great week and you're enjoying your creative time with the Lord. Today I'm going to show you a, um, we're going to be working from the exercise on page 72 called Psalm Doodle. And I'm just going to take you through the step-by-step -step sort of process of creating a Scripture Doodle from scratch, which a lot of these exercises are led with um, a partially started doodle or just or sort of a concept related to the creative process. So here we are going to just jump right in and start from scratch. So I want to tell you a little bit about the recommended supplies. Today I'm going to show you a basic black and white scripture doodle. I will show you a little bit of shading, some cross hatching tips, and um, I'm basically going to be using um, just a pen and a pencil. So. <clears throat> Here are a few things you'll need. Um, an eraser, a pencil sharpener, any kind of pencil you like, and then a felt tip pen. So with these pages, um, the best pen, in my opinion, is something like the Pigma Micron, which I know I've used in the past, but the good thing about these pens is they will not bleed through these pages. Um, and this is also a great choice as well. This is a Zig Writer. Uh, the only difference is that it has a thicker end, a, 1.2 millimeter and then the 0.05, which the 0.05 is the same as this Pigma Micron. If you're using a Sharpie, um, it will bleed through to the next page, so just kind of keep that in mind. It's not terrible, you can still use a Sharpie, but um, that would be my only word of advice. So I want to take you through quickly um, just this idea of shading with black and white. So last week we used charcoal, so you got the idea of charcoal, but um, cross hatching is a really fun technique to use if you're just working in black and white and for years really almost all of my scripture doodles were um, just plain black and white so the best thing to do is you're sort of creating I'm going to create a little bit of a gray scale um, the line all the way to the left being simply um, just white and then with cross hatching you know the idea is that you're making lines that are going to crisscross and create more shadow so um, if you are choosing a light source like we practiced last week that will help you kind of decide where your shadow is going to hit but you know your first level of shadow might be something like this and then your second level of shadow you would recreate these same lines and then you're going to crisscross again in a in the opposite direction so you can see um, that even just sometimes if you squint you can see it a little bit better when it comes to shading but I'm creating a third level of shadow here with two ways and then I'm gonna start a third line as well so you can see that I'm not completely giving you know the other angle which would be a vertical line I'm sort of crisscrossing again and then I'm gonna come back with a different angle even further and get this sort of like fourth level of shading. Now, if you keep going, you know, this can be messy, it can be neat and tidy, it's really going to depend on your style, but I want to kind of show you the, you know, your darkest level, and your darkest would be just kind of cross-hatching forever and ever and ever <laughs> until you got, you know, almost black. Your, you know, characteristic of cross-hatching is these little white spots that come between the lines that you're laying down, um, and it sort of has a rough feel. So for me, I like a rough look of sort of sketching and scripture doodle. So I love this style and it's simple and you really only need a pen and paper. Um, if you are shading an object that is round, one of the things you can do is you can sort of like curve your lines and I wanna show you the difference. There is a cross hatching exercise in the book which you can refer to and I share a lot of the same stuff. But you can see right here, <clears throat> I'm still creating the shadow on this left bottom side of my circle, but what I'm doing is I'm using these straight lines, which, you know, it's kind of boxy. However, if I were to kind of come in with a slightly curved line, you know, on this circle, and I'm crisscrossing, but I'm not, it's not as systematic as if you're doing a square, but you can see my lines are curving a little bit, and it's gonna, you're sort of suggesting the shape that, oh, this is a sphere, this is, more circular than if you're just using these um, vertical, horizontal, and diagonal lines. So a way to create um, more, like a darker shadow would be to have your lines closer together, so which you saw up here. And I'm gonna do that um, here as well. I'm coming in this bottom left side, which is gonna be my darkest 
side if my light source is coming from here. Um, I'm, I'm just making small short strokes that are close together and I'm crisscrossing them. And like I said, this is sort of a messy style. You can look up cross hatching online and there's so many great YouTube videos and all that, but um, to give you just a, a view of, you know, the large array of choices. But, you know, as I get closer to the light source, I'm gonna see a little highlight, which means I'm making my lines farther apart and they're more sparse. And then, you know, you can decide to make this whole section white or you could bring your shadow all the way up to sort of just a little highlight up here. But um, that's sort of up to you. But I just want to show you this simple way of shading when it comes to working in black and white, especially with a felt tip pen. Cross hatching is a fun way to do that. And it's a little bit quicker than just, you know, doing this to create a shadow and it has a more fun look to it if you ask me so <clears throat> we'll practice that a little bit but why don't you open up the book to page 72 and I'm going to talk you through just this idea of like composition creating a composition um, from a blank page which is what you have here so the first you know the instructions in this exercise are read the read the passage choose a verse that is visual and create from there so I'm gonna you know the best thing is to read the whole passage so this is a familiar scripture of Psalm 23 the Lord is my shepherd I like nothing he makes me lie down in green pastures as you read through I just love that this whole psalm is about you know the protection of God and how you know in the presence of your enemies and against opposition it's like he provides for you he refreshes for you he refreshes you when when the odds are stacked against you. And I just love that about God. It's so true in every circumstance. And so as you read through and just take a few moments to think on what it's saying, the good thing about this psalm is that it is so visual. There are so many visual elements that you could choose from. So I did a little border around here, which have some different visual elements that you could choose from, or you could kind of go with a separate... Um, one that's not pictured here. And so as you as you read down, you might want to circle like, oh, quiet waters. Waters is a visual word, and quiet waters would maybe look more calm than a storm or something like that. Um, so you could talk about walking, um, a valley. Circle visual words until you see like, oh, I think that one sparks an interest in my, in my mind. I want to go from there. So for me, I'm going to go with something a little bit different than what I drew here, and I'm gonna get this chunk right here. And as you choose, you know, a portion of the verse, I'm not sure what portion of the verse, of the passage this is, but you know, you don't have to illustrate the entire sentence of what it's saying. So this portion says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. So there's so many visual elements in just this short sentence. So don't be overwhelmed thinking you have to create this, you know, detailed picture citing every visual element. You can, um, you can just have one, you know, little spot that is visual. So for me, I think I'm going to go with this word table because um, I, I'm imagining like a dinner feast. Um, I love that it says you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. It just makes me think like even when times are tough and things are stacked against you, he's going to let you rest. And when you think of eating, you you know, when you're sitting down to a table, you're resting and you're taking time to regroup and you're safe. You know, um, you're not running around um, trying to stay away from something. You're having this moment to just sit with, you know, people you love and um, and with the Lord. So I just love that. And then the other part I'm going to illustrate is this idea of my cup overflows. So there are some visual elements that I'm not hitting here. The idea of anointing my head with oil. I, I considered doing a, you know, a portrait of someone with being anointed. Um, and I just thought for that is maybe a little too detailed than what I want to do right now. So that's okay. You can choose what feels simple and doable you know, as you go. Don't be discouraged about that. So those are the two things I'm going to hit on. <clears throat> and then at the end, I am going to put the whole verse in the background of my picture. So even if you're not citing the whole, every detail in the passage, you know, you're going to cite it as you write the word 
from the verse in your picture. So you can choose to do that a few different ways. Um, I always recommend if you're not really sure kind of where to start, um, sketching on a piece of paper with pencil if you want to, or if you're pretty confident, you can just sort of go with it. I did a little sketching before this, so I'm just gonna go for it, but um, sketch and pencil on a scrap piece, and then you can also, you know, sketch with pencil here. I always recommend start with pencil, so if you mess up, you can erase it and kind of go from there. So I'll talk a little bit about things like balance and, um, you know, creating a good composition for this picture. I'm actually gonna flip the page this way. Am I allowed to do that? Let's just do that. Um, and you can, you know, even though this is a book and everything's vertical, vertical you, can, you can go sideways, it's no big deal. So I'm gonna draw this um, table, and I'm telling you, this is gonna be simple. So um, I'm drawing just like a front-on image of this table. I'm not gonna see the top of it. You could see the top of it, but I wanna capture um, these legs. Um, keep in mind if you as you're creating you know it's good to fill the whole page and it's also good to to think okay am I gonna have a border in this picture if you're not sure um, you're gonna be able to fill your space all the way create a border something simple we have a we have an exercise in the beginning of the book about borders so you know you could just jump back there or remember one of the things that you that you did in creating a border and that would kind of give your picture a little more um, pizzazz. So I'm doing this table and I will come back and shade this and then I'm gonna do this cup. <clears throat> and as I'm like to be completely honest I'm sitting here thinking maybe I should have done vertical because I want to have this like stream of water coming down from the sky and that won't be as dramatic in a horizontal um, landscape way but we're just gonna go with it because I already started um, but these are just the things that you know you might be thinking as you create and um, no big deal, I'll just go with it. So I'm just creating this simple um, cup. I've overlapped on the table a little bit, so it's not sitting directly floating on the table. It is overlapping a little bit. And um, you can see I'm working in the center. So if you wanna create dimension, you could choose where your light source is. I always tend to gravitate um, having my light source over here. I don't know, maybe because I'm right-handed. So as I'm planning, I'm thinking about things like, okay, there's gonna be shadow here, and maybe there's gonna cast a little shadow on my table. That's all stuff that I will work through at the very end. And so then I wanna illustrate this idea of my cup is running over. So I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna have this water sort of coming out of the sky. If that's weird for you, you could do, um, water sort of pouring out of a jar or you know a watering can or something like that but I'm gonna hit this idea of water coming out of the sky so I I have you know done work with water before and so I kind of know what water looks like when it's streaming out of a faucet if if you're like I don't know this just isn't looking right get online and um and sort of find a picture of water flowing from a faucet and make notes of things like the shadows that are gonna hit where the water is a couple different colors and um, you know it sort of streams in this spiral way down all those things are good things that you can take note of as you're drawing I think that um, Google is your friend when you're trying to um, figure out how something looks in real life um, so as I have the water coming down into the cup I'm going to uh, draw some splashes coming out little raindrops upside down raindrops sort of and just this idea of like this cup is overflowing it's full and you know that's how God is to us he, he fills us fully um, when we are in his presence so this is my rough sketch then I'm gonna come back and I will do my verse at the very end I'm gonna come back now with um, the pigma micron and sort of add to this but you know as you're sketching in pencil sketch the most important things that you don't want to mess up for things that you're confident of like for me I'm not gonna re-sketch my words exactly because I'm just gonna do a simple lettering but if if for this you were gonna do like a really detailed lettering style you might want to sketch that first
Okay, so here is my finished scripture doodle um, in just a black and white felt tip pen. I know we sped it up, but if you watched, I'll kind of note a few of the things that I did. Um, things to consider are composition. So if, like I said, for this, I had my picture directly in the center, but if I was going to have a sort of um, asymmetrically balanced composition, I, if I had something in this lower corner, I would want something else to balance it um, across the page and maybe up a little bit farther. If I had something here, I would want to balance it with something maybe smaller um, on the other side of the page. But I did directly in the center. So, you know, I had sort of even spaces on both sides, so that's something to consider. Um, you know, that negative space that's not something you're actually drawing, but the space between. Other things to consider to add detail is, like I said, the cross hatching, which I kind of talked to you through um, earlier in the video. But as I was working, I thought, oh, what kind of table is this? Let's make it a wooden table. So I did some simple sort of wood grain here, and then I can. I still on top of that did a little bit of cross hatching to create shadow and you can see I sort of had my light source here and I erased that but not a ton but a little cross hatching here keeping in mind the shape that I was shading so this was like a you know a square type of shape with clean lines so my cross hatching lines are not curved like I was showing you earlier in the circle um, or in the sphere they're straight on and I really don't have much here I noted that this underneath really isn't going to catch a lot of light and maybe if I would have done it again I would have done a little cross hatching down here but um, just think of like where's the light not going to hit that's where you want to shade um, for the water coming down from from the top of the page um, I did have a little bit of um, curved lines as I was cross hatching but you may have seen I first laid in my outline lines with before I cross hatched so you know in this style of doodle where you're having hard outlines of everything um, I lined this water first and the outline of the splashes and then I came back and followed those guidelines I had already given to create my cross hatching and then you know perhaps this side of the water should be a little bit darker um, it's still a little bit darker than this um, right side but those are things to consider as you sort of critique your work um, then the last thing I did is I added the, the verse and um, <clears throat> I was um, making sure that I spelled this right but I was also considering um, okay so how can I break up this verse into phrases um, since I'm just doing a simple lettering. So I said, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Um, and then I said, my cup overflows. And if I did it again, I would probably center this, my cup overflows underneath. Um, but, you know, I always have the verse reference to sort of balance what I did here. So this is, you know, sort of off balance. Thankfully, I had the Psalm 23 to put in here, which balanced it a little bit. But had I outlined my text in pencil, which I maybe should have done because I also sort of <laughs> forgot the A in here. But, um, you know, human error is a thing, so it's no big deal. I might have added this into the center. And then from there, I erased my lines. And if you wanted to, you could come back in the medium of your choice, color, pencil, watercolor, um, marker even, and, and add some, you know, bright color detail to it. But that was sort of a quick... Um, illustration of how to create a scripture tool, but the whole concept is choose a keyword out of your verse that's visual and start from there. Um, it doesn't have to be the whole portion of the verse. It can be parts of it like we did here with the table and the overflowing cup. Um, so have fun with this one. We will see you next week and um, thanks for tuning in.